Hi, so I just wanted to make a quick video on some easy setup and some quality of life features that Godot has. Um, so without further ado, let's get started. Um, so the first thing uh, I want to do is change the default font and have some font ligatures. So in order to do that, let's just have a look here. Um, so I'll just create a script really quickly and you can see this is the default font and it's a little bit small in, in my editor right now. So you can just use control plus to increase the size or control minus to make it a little bit smaller. Um, so I'll just make it a little bigger to see better. Uh, and then to change the font, we go to project, uh, oh, sorry, editor, excuse me, editor, editor settings. Uh, and now under interface editor, you can see we can scroll down uh, and here's the code font. So we can switch that font and I'm just gonna go up one. I've already downloaded uh, Fira code, which has ligatures and I'm gonna pick, for instance, Fira code retina and we'll hit okay. Um, the other way, the other thing you have to do in order to enable ligatures is come up to code font contextual ligatures and hit enabled. And here you can see is the code font size, which I've increased to 21, but you can reset that back to a smaller value if you want there. Um, but I'm going to keep it on the slide, larger side. So now we have uh, ligatures. So if we come here, we can hit there uh, and let's put void. seed bar x x greater than or equal to three uh, and then you have font ligature set up all right um speaking of uh typing um one easy quality of life feature is uh multiple cursors so just um click anywhere hold down alt and then click on a new line and you have multiple cursors um oops so just alt and here you go if you want to do a bunch of at on readies for example um uh, on readies, um, you can do that. Um, if you don't want to use the mouse, uh, you just hit escape to get rid of your multiple cursors. Um, you can hold control shift and then just move your carrot up or down and it will uh, add multiple cursors above or below. Now let's say you don't want to have to type out on ready. Um, one super fun feature is you can just come over here to uh, the node, drag it out. Now if you just drag it out plainly, you'll, you'll see uh, Let's see that, but let's say we have an animation player. Uh, animation player. So we add an animation player and we need to get an on ready. Um, if I drag it out and hit um, and drag it out, it'll just be that. But we can do one better. If I start dragging it uh, and then hold down control right before I release it, you get the entire on ready bar put out for you. Now, one other neat feature is um, so let's say I decide to reparent the animation player. Um, uh, let's just put another node 2D. And I put the animation player now under there. This will no longer work, it's broken, because the path now, if um, if you see, for instance, if I drag it out again, now has to be this if I'm gonna actually access this, otherwise I'll get a null uh, null variable. So um, what's, a, what's an easy way to do it if you're not quite sure of your node structure and you wanna decide, um, and you don't wanna decide exactly what you're doing, but you wanna get coding come over here, right click on your animation player and uh, type access as unique name. And I believe you can hotkey that, but um, you'll have to look into that. Now we have an, a unique name. And now if I do the on ready, so again, drag it out, hold down control right before I release it. Uh, now it'll have the percent sign and that will, I'm gonna have to get rid of that one. Uh, and now it will follow around. It doesn't matter if uh, it's under node 2D or under there, or I move it way down the tree structure, it'll always find it so I don't have to keep uh, repathing the variable. So that's one really helpful uh, thing to do. Uh, now let us do folding. So for instance, I have these functions now, and let's say I have a, a million more functions and I you know, just wanna get them all um, closed up so that, uh, so that I can see. To begin, you can come down to the line and hit Alt-F, and Alt-F will toggle between folded and unfolded, so that's a quick and easy way, but there's actually a way to bind all unfolding, and to do that, we come over here to Editor uh, and Editor Settings, and under Shortcuts, rather than the General tab, and type Fold, you'll see there's a command line for fold all lines and unfold all lines. Unfortunately, there's not a toggle feature 
um, like there is with the alt f so you have to bind two different commands um, now just realize for the shortcuts unfortunately it doesn't um, tell you if there's a naming collision and it will default to the original uh, or whatever's above it so for instance let's say i decide oh i want um, control uh, alt f to be the um, the fold all lines macro i come hit plus and do control alt f uh, and i think great this is going to be fantastic control alt f um, and then i come down here to use control alt f unfortunately it's coming to a go to function which is already bound um, so it didn't tell you anywhere that there was a naming collision so you just have to make sure you um, look through the settings when you're when you're adding a new hotkey for yourself um, i'm going to do because i know this is unbound is instead of um, alt f i'm going to do alt shift f so let's reset that hit come here plus alt shift f uh, and then for unfold all lines i'm going to do something ungodly control alt shift f uh, and there so now, if I do Alt F outside, it doesn't work, but if I want to fold everything all at once, if I do Alt Shift F, now all of a sudden you can see they're all folded. And if I want to unfold it, I have to mash Control Alt Shift F and all the functions will be unfolded for you. So I think that's a pretty uh, helpful uh, utility they have. Um, finally, uh, if you notice we're using type hints, you should be using type hints. So um, if you want to set those on by default, come here to editor and editor settings and uh, Oops, that's shortcuts, but we'll go back to general and we'll type for type hint and Under text editor completion. There's add type hints and now Unfortunately, it won't add it to anything you already have, but if I make a new script for example Let's come down to the animation player and make a new script You can see that I have um, it will automatically add the type hinting for the built-in functions uh, let's see. Uh, and then, oh, right, text editor naming. So um, the other thing I wanted to show you is if we look at the animation player, animation changed, uh, libraries updated, for example, and let's say we want to make a signal. We come here to the, you know, uh, the uh, you're on the inspector node, uh, and then you want to make a signal, and you connect it. If you look at the... Oop, I've already changed it, so uh, let me just show you where you go. Um, so let's just show you what it looks like by default, and then I'll show you how to change it. So um, if I click connect here and you see the name, it's this huge long name by default on animation player, animation library is updated, my God. All right, so how do we kind of make that a little more compact? Unfortunately, they used to have a setting in the editor settings, but it never worked right, and so they've just set it under project settings. But importantly, if you just come here, so that's off by default, if you just come here on the default look, you're just gonna see um, under, um, under GUI or editor, you just see this movie writer, um, which doesn't have the setting we need. But if we click on advanced settings, all of a sudden there's a huge amount uh, more uh, things you can change for your project. And one of the things we're going to change is come down here to uh, the editor. And under the editor, under naming, you can see we now actually have the ability on a project per project base. So you do have to change this every project. Um, you do. But instead of this um, on node underscore name underscore signal underscore name, which will just vomit out this huge list, you can hold, um, you can hover over here and it'll show you the different. Um, naming conventions they have that you can select. I'm going to change it to a Pascal case. So I'm going to go uh, node, I'm going to remove that and do node name and underscores. I'm going to keep that underscore because I think that's helpful. I'm going to come here to node name, signal name. And now when I hit close, uh, and let's say I want to make uh, this uh, animation libraries updated, if I hit connect, you'll see the default name is now much more sane. It's underscore on, underscore, and now the animation player is one, and the animation library is updated as another, and it's just gonna look a lot more manageable than, than the default setting. Um, the only other thing I, I can think of to show you guys right now is, um, just like we had dragged off of, off of there, um, you can actually, for instance, let's say I made a packed scene out of this, um, 
So come down here and then save branch as scene, which is very helpful because let's say you've you know, made a nice uh, whole bunch of different nodes in a tree and you want to save it as its own scene. Um, now we've got this as a packed scene and you can see it's down here and let's say I want to, let's say I need to load that, um, load that as a resource. Come up here and the same thing, um, come and drag it out. If you just drag it out, it's just going to give you the path name. But um, if you come and drag and then hold down control right before you release, um, it'll add the preload in parentheses. Now, why do I say hold down the control um, after you've dragged? I'll show you. It, the default behavior is a little funny. Like, let's say I want to come to this animation player and drag it out um, for an on ready. If I hold down control before I um, before I click it and drag it, it's going to select both. And now when I release it, I've got this extra line that I didn't want. Um, so it's a, the behavior is a little funky if you um, like, for instance. I've already got it selected and I come over here and I hold down control to drag it, I actually end up unselecting it rather than dragging. So that code isn't perfect. So again, just come here, start dragging, then hold down control and release and it'll work every time. All right, and then uh, the last thing I wanna show you is, speaking of auto text, um, is if you uh, need a resource path. So for instance, let's, let's say you want gravity um, project setting. You can come here to project, project settings, and we can filter for gravity. And you might need the resource for some reason or another. Um, and it'll if you click on it, it'll actually show you the physics 2D default gravity. But you can also right click and hit copy property path, or you can just do the hotkey control shift C. And when you copy the property path, now let's say you need to load the resource from a, from a property path and you paste it, it'll show you the, um, the path ready to go. And then uh, one last thing uh, that I think is very helpful. Um, let's say you you know have an animation player and you've added you know a new animation track and you've set up this positioning and you really love it and it's really awesome. You can come here to edit and you can copy the track. And I'm going to copy the position one, and then I can come over here to let's say a different node in an animation player and I can just paste that in now. It's going to complain, of course, this is a 3D track, so it's going to be invalid, but, uh, you know, uh, assuming that it made sense, you, you could paste in uh, that track so you don't have to duplicate all your work every time. Some stuff that I found useful uh, in getting going, um, if you have any quality of life tips or tricks that you like, please leave a comment down below. Thanks so much.